So there's a story coming out of Florida that's making headlines. This really is something. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is in The Hill. They say Florida cites critical race theory references among reasons for rejecting 54 math textbooks. Jeez, that's a lot of textbooks. Florida's Department of Education announced on Friday that the state had rejected 54 math textbooks out of a total of 132 submitted, citing references to critical race theory among the reasons for the rejections. The state agency said 28 textbooks had been rejected because, quote, they incorporate prohibited topics or unsolicited strategies, including CRT. Among some of the state's other reasons for rejecting the mathematical materials, the department cited the inclusion of social-emotional learning and common core in the textbooks. SEL programming is intended to help students develop and manage healthy relationships and identities, can't allow that, manage their emotions and make responsible choices. Among other aims, uh, among other aims, some conservative activists have claimed it's a vehicle for CRT, according to, <laughs> according to the Washington Post, which is generally taught in institutions of higher education and centers the United States legacy of institutional racism in understanding past and current history. So, uh, 54 of 132 math textbooks are rejected. Okay, guys. This does look like a bit of a witch hunt, doesn't it? You're telling me 54 of the 132 math textbooks are unacceptable because... I'd like to ask them, what percentage of them, or how many of them, bring up critical race theory, and then what percentage of it is the other thing? The inclusion of social-emotional learning, which apparently they're against... I really don't know what that is, but it doesn't, it sounds relatively benign. And Common Core, that's like the federal standards. I wonder what percentage of them are because of those things and what percentage is because of CRT. Is there, are there like math questions that include bringing up the race of you know, Bobby and his friend Steve or something? I don't know. I don't know. But to ban 54 of 132, it does strike me like a little bit of a moral panic, doesn't it? It does strike me like a little bit of hysteria here. And it's funny because. You know, the argument against the, the what's derisively called the social justice warriors was always like, you guys are so insane and you're so authoritarian and you're so petty that not only will you ban speakers, you're going to ban books. And we're for freedom and people should be able to read whatever they want to read, so banning books is psycho. And now you have 54 of 132 math textbooks being rejected, not because of so-called social justice warriors, because of so-called anti-social justice warriors, because they're scared of CRT, critical race theory, which again, in most instance, instances, is taught in higher education. I don't know how much CRT is in like public schools at, at the, whatever, grade school level, middle school level, even high school level. So it's a little bit of, these people are mirroring the tactics of those they claim to disagree with. That, I don't know, man. I don't know. Now, you might say, well, hold on, man. Let's grant them this. Let's say it only one of the books had a CRT problem or whatever, and the other um, the other books in there, really it was more the social-emotional learning thing, which for whatever reason they're against, and the Common Core thing. Maybe there are some legitimate reasons why these books were pulled. I don't necessarily agree with that, but let me grant that for the sake of the argument. The broader point here is people on the right who claim we're all about freedom um, are now saying maybe we should ban books we disagree with. Okay. It's gotten even more ridiculous. Take a look at this story, because this is really something else. It's okay to be a unicorn comes under fire in Ohio school district. Author Jason Tharp said a school principal told him last week that he could no longer read his book at a local school event. It's okay to be a unicorn was banned at this school because there was one complaint from one parent. Now, why did they ban it? What's it's okay to be a unicorn about? By the way, they're not really like overt uh, LGBTQ themes in it. I think one article I read said there's a rainbow on the front of the book. And so perhaps this parent is super conservative and they interpreted that as you're pushing LGBTQ ideas on my, on my kid. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is it's possible that they just look at it's okay to be a unicorn and they, they interpret that as they're saying it's okay to be trans or gay or whatever, and that's indoctrinating my kid. The name of the book isn't, I'm going to force you to be trans or gay. I, I want to make you something you're not. The whole point of the book is, it's okay to be a unicorn. It's okay to just be 
whoever you are. I imagine disagreeing with that idea, disagreeing with that concept. No, it's not okay to be who you are. If you're not the thing that I want you to be and I want to force on you through whatever sort of social construct we've set up, well, then that's a problem. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. Look, I, I'm consistent on this, man. You guys know me. I am what one might call a libertarian leftist. So what that means is I'm live and let live on social issues, but on economic issues, I'm in favor of security, I'm in favor of regulation, I'm in favor of redistribution. So that means I'm opposed to what's called the authoritarian left. I don't agree with banning speakers from going to college campuses or banning people from social media, unless it's like a direct threat of violence type thing, in which case that's different, but I'm in favor of freedom. So I'll go after the authoritarian left if I think they're doing something wrong. This is now the right, while cloaking themselves in virtuousness and like we're just trying to protect kids, they're being authoritarian. This is authoritarianism. Ban the books I don't like because they teach ideas that I don't agree with. Well, hold on, hold on. What's the, to go back to the original story, what's the whole point of school? Like, this is the thing. You want to say there's some ideas on the left that, that go too far and um, perhaps they're indoctrinating kids into a certain way of thinking? I agree with that. There were factual inaccuracies in the 1619 Project. The idea you base entire curriculums around that or teach that as the only view of American history, that's wrong. That's not a good idea. Don't do that. But by the same token... The right-wingers will say, you're teaching, like, fake history, don't do that. And then they turn around and say, let's do this, like, patriotic curriculum thing where they only want to teach the good parts about America. And they want to teach American exceptionalism as if it's, like, an objective fact. No, stop doing the competing indoctrination game. The whole idea of education is supposed to be, look, we're going to give you all of the facts and information, good and bad, and then you do critical thinking on your own and form your own c conclusions and your own opinions. That's what it's supposed to be about. Now, in some classes, it is more black and white, no pun intended, of like, you know, math is math. Science is science. The conclusions sort of are what they are. That should be taught in as dry a way as possible, where it's just like, this is how it goes. But in everything else, it should be, here's the good, here's the bad, here are all the facts, now you make your decision on it. So the competing indoctrination game we're talking about here is annoying as hell. And this is triggered right-wingers who are going authoritarian, don't... Because one parent complained about a, it's okay to be a unicorn book, now we can't use that one. 50, what was it, 54, 52 math textbooks? Well, what's 54 math textbooks have to go? Because probably of the mildest critiques of all time with the way that they're worded and stuff? I mean, come on, man. This is baby shit. This is baby shit. It's amazing how you could take an issue that is really like a non-issue... And just through the culture war, sort of gin up impassionate, impassionate, that's not a word, passionate disagreement. You know what I mean? It's astonishing to watch this unfold in real time. To see one thing after the next thing after the next thing. And next thing you know, people are banning books and complaining over fucking unicorn shit. Come on. Anyway, there you have it. Wild story. Make of it whatever you will. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.